Alrighty guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Astro Colony with Lone Devader 7 And today, we're just going to catch you up on some of the stuff I've done since the last episode. So first things first, as you can tell right here, we have added solar pan power to our station. We have fully converted to solar. Uh, we currently have 48 power being generated. All of it's being consumed. Uh, so we can't really add anything more at this point, but we are fully solar powered. Uh, so with this solar power now coming in, we no longer need to use coal for power. So I've destroyed all the carbon reactors. It, it's not coal, it's actually carbon. Sorry, guys. Um, I went ahead and broke all the carbon reactors over here and broke out the uh, the line as well. I did not realize I had some cables sitting there. Don't need them. Um, so I adjusted our input feed in order to reflect the changes we've made. So coal is now being pushed off right here and split 50-50 between making iron rods and being stored in the box. Eventually this path is going to feed into the constructor so we can make carbon fiber out of the coal or carbon ore, whatever. Uh, but pretty easy change. We basically broke this. We changed this pusher so it's no longer doing carbon ore. It's just doing ice. Easy peasy. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to show off. So copper wire is utilized to make electronic parts, right? So last time we just had the belt going this way, feeding into the box, and that was it. So we had the manufacturer linked in. I now have it splitting two of our copper wires into our constructor and one going back to the box. Everything else is just going straight to the box. Uh, that way we can make electronic parts because you need these for science down the road. So having a big chunk of electronic parts is super helpful. Uh, so yeah, that's basically what has been changed since last time. I also cleared out this pad that was kind of obstructing a lot of our building area, um, just so we can uh, kind of have a little bit nicer go of things. I am going to just fill this stuff in real quick. The little corner blocks are not bad, it's just I want them square because then you can actually you know, put stuff on them. Uh, we'll leave that, that's fine texturing right <laughs> uh, but anyway so I went ahead and built these platforms so I've got a lower one which is where I'm gonna put all of our power it doesn't actually matter if you cover up the solar panels they still generate the same um, but I am gonna do like a glass floor for this upper level uh, so you can walk out and kind of see the power I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna put on the upper level but it's there if we want to utilize that space so kind of at this point in the game there's a few things we need to look at uh, something that we haven't taken a look at yet is what planetoids are around us. So we have these small ones, like this guy right here has an iron deposit on it. We can grab those with the harpoon, the cosmic harpoon, but I'm talking about the bigger planetoids, the ones that have um, a lot, they have a lot more resource. They all, So this guy off in the distance, see how it's not highlighting and telling me what's on it? That is a larger planetoid. It's actually quite a ways away. If we hit M, by default on the keyboard, it opens up your map and takes you to this screen. So your station's right here. It shows you the large planetoids around you, and you can kind of take a look. It also puts them in a list if it's easier for you to look that way. So the closest one here to us is Psyche, it looks like. Um, it's got carbon and copper, so not that great. Zup, uh, I guess that's how you say that, 31. <laughs> is actually quite an attractive one to go to, I think. It's got over 20,000 carbon, has some iron, has over 50,000 copper, but the main thing is it has almost 30,000 gold on it. So if we go there and mine out the gold in particular, we'll be able to basically build solar panels forever. And uh, yeah, we won't have to worry about gold again if we gather 30,000. Um, there is Elru Obuab, I guess, and it has Quite a bit of carbon, a little bit of iron, quite a bit of copper, and quite a bit of titanium. So that's not a bad planet to try out because we will need titanium eventually. We've got Kira Prime, which has a little bit of carbon, a little bit of copper, a little bit of titanium, and 10,000 uranium, which that's actually not bad. When we get closer to nuclear power, we'll probably go here and mine out the uranium. Um, Kryptonical, Kryptonica Digitalis. Okay. So a little bit of copper, or a little bit of copper, a little bit of carbon, a little bit of gold, tiny speck of aluminum. So that one's not that great. Uh, we've got 
Altonus Majoris. So carbon, iron, copper, a little bit of titanium, uranium. Uh, this guy, Anastara Diatu, has very little resource. Probably won't go there. Uh, Shatter Sphere has quite a bit of carbon. Actually, this one's not bad. It's got carbon, iron, copper, titanium, and uranium. So we'll actually probably go kind of what I'm thinking. We're going to go to Tease Up 31 first to get the gold. And we'll probably go to Shatter Sphere to grab this uranium and titanium. Um, that's not a bad play. Uh, something to mention about the map screen here. Uh, you are actually able... So we only have these guys in our list right now, right? We haven't visited any of them, yada yada. Well, you can actually find more than what starts in your initial list. If you start moving your station around, uh, it will eventually identify more large planetoids for you to to go to. So you do you aren't just like fixed with what spawns in your initial sector. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you're playing along, and let's say like for example. Out of the planetoids that we've got here, none of them really have aluminum. We have like a total of maybe 200 aluminum we can mine. That's nowhere near enough to be able to do the tech tree or utilize aluminum to build with either. So we need to go find a larger planetoid that has aluminum. We're not screwed with our seed. All we have to do is fly in one direction until we find more planetoids and likely we will get some aluminum out of that. To find one with aluminum. We just have to find you know look around a little bit not too bad so <clears throat> at this point i think what i want to do we've got this system kind of going the only issue i've got is it's not really generating resources fast enough for us so i need to expand this out with more catchers is what it boils down to i believe a mark one belt can handle up to eight of these it might be able to do a little bit more i'm not actually 100 percent on that um it's definitely handling right now. We aren't, this belt is not backed up, so we're good. So I think what we're gonna try to do is add a couple more. Now, with that being said, I am gonna need some more solar panels is the thing. So we are gonna go ahead and manually put in our stored up gold plate and gold ingots into the constructor and manufacturer to get some more gold wire because these bad mammoths take four power. So we need to get up to 50, uh, 56 power, I think, to do what I'm wanting to do. So that's not too bad. It's only, you know, another eight solar panels. So pretty easy, pretty easy. Um, eventually what the plan is, once we have this kind of saturated, meaning the feed belt into our smelter here, I'm then going to effectively mirror this system on the other half of the ship. And that half of the ship is just going to be utilizing all of the, we're not gonna store any of the resources in a box we're just going to push them all into further production chains um and that's kind of the plan i have that way i don't have to split the resources uh that i'm using for building in you know into further processing because there are more advanced things than just cable and plates right there are there are more things you have to be able to build uh so that's kind of the plan at this point um we've done a little bit not a whole lot but we're getting there I mean, we've got a ton of oxygen. Something we should start looking at is actually how do you get to those planetoids. So we haven't talked about that at all yet. Um, I'd be happy to show you. So first things first, let's go build these solar panels just so I can show you that they're fine. So middle click to grab them. And we're going to actually, let's finish this one off first. Do that. And that. And we've got 54, so we're two power short. We only need two more. And there is a gold asteroid captured. There is some gold right here. So we will go ahead and mine this asteroid as well. It has ice in there, but it's not a big deal. Just throw the ice in the breaker. <clears throat> and then the gold in the smelter will be golden. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, yeah, let, let's go back. We'll put these resources where they need to go. So ice cubes and gold yeah that's the struggle when you first get over to solar power so i mean this took quite a bit of gold in order to build basically all of the gold that i have gathered since starting this series minus two ingots because that is what this takes to build is two gold ingots um 
has gone into solar power solar panels and we only have 54 so i mean i want to say that we're maybe two three hours of playtime something in that neighborhood so two three hours just to get 54 power now granted we only have six catchers if you have more it obviously goes faster and all of that scales of ratios blah 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 um but yeah anyway we were able to do it uh reasonably quickly uh so i would suggest trying to get onto solar power as soon as possible it just makes your life easier then you don't have to worry about all the weird split ratios and all that noise with your carbon ore and you also need quite a bit of carbon ore once you get into building carbon fiber because it takes 10 for each one now we're gonna ultimately build like a large carbon fiber plant because it does take 30 seconds for each one of these to craft so we'll probably end up having two or three maybe we'll do like a 4x constructor setup for this so you get four of them every 30 seconds instead of just one uh, but we'll see we will need a lot of carbon in order to run four constructors making carbon fiber at the same time so yeah we need to bear that in mind um we only have 38 iron we don't have a whole lot of iron plate so this is why like building the iron plate that is why i am looking at expanding this out and do two can i get a third one i can get a third one awesome um yeah we're basically just waiting on more iron plate to be built that way i can continue making our uh our factory expanding these out add more catchers these also take 12 plates and six ingots and the floor is just plates the belts are just plates and wire so there's a lot like we have the resources they are being made we just need to kind of wait for the system to process things uh the only thing that i could consider doing here so these resources you can actually specify what type of asteroids you want your catchers to look for so i could specify a few of them just to do iron or asteroids and that will increase the amount of iron that is going into our system um <clears throat> the only thing with that it there are dual material asteroids right so yes you can specify iron only and try to just have a only iron on a belt it, in practice it does not work that way because you are going to get some double material asteroids that have things other than iron inside of them and that will prevent you from it, you you have to sort that out if you're just trying to have only iron on the belt so that's why i haven't done it um not a big deal we can always adjust that later what i was thinking is maybe at some point um once we have if eight is going to be the maximum on that belt what we could do is maybe set two of them to iron two of them to copper two to coal or two to carbon and two to ice and that would probably work decent for us i think um because you have two for each type and then the only thing with that is i don't know if it will grab the gold asteroids or not so realistically i don't want to specify them out because i don't want just one material i want all the materials right so that's kind of the plan we'll just add more catchers and eventually we won't have to worry about gathering iron anymore um there's that we need to go out one more and then we'll be good to go uh let me just see so it's gonna be one in I can place all of these like that <clears throat> and then the wires gonna go boom boom am i doing that as a oh, just bring it over like that and now everything's set up except for the floor and the actual catchers there's the floor there's one catcher we just gotta wait a second for some more plates to come through and we'll have the second one good to go so not too bad i mean it, it goes reasonably quickly to expand this system if you're doing it two at a time um <clears throat> the main limitation is that the floors take a lot of plates and this is 13 across so we basically need 13 times five every time we want to extend the floor not actually what I wanted to do. I just wasted a bunch of weights. Yay. Um, okay. Cool. This bit right here, probably don't need, but we have it anyway. Um, something I did want to look at after we get this done. We only need a few more. 
Come on, make some more iron plates. We are ready for it. So we're, um, we're gonna go ahead and throw this gold manually back in. I could, in fact, you know, change it so we're not um, splitting our gold because realistically we just want gold wire for solar panels we do need some gold ingots i suppose and i don't know if gold plate is used for anything else but we might need that too but there we go we've expanded the system up to eight catchers i'm gonna let this run for a little bit and see if we can maybe squeeze a couple more on the line without impacting stuff so basically if this belt is too full by the time it gets up here these front two catchers are going to fill up with resources and not be able to put out onto the belt uh, if that happens, then it means you've got too many of these for the level of belt we've got. So either I have to wait until we research uh, Mark II belts for full efficiency, or we just take off some of the catchers and just scale down the system and build another system running on a separate line that then feeds in. So what you could do on that is there are two inputs onto a uh, smelter here. So you have one line that's full running into this side and the other line running into this side. It just means I'd have to adjust how we split off the resources. Basically, we pull right from here all of the ice and carbon ore off. And same for the second belt would probably be running right next to it. We'd pull those off onto a singular belt. Then we'd split the ice into the breakers and the carbon um, off into two. So one to go, one line to go into the constructors and the other line to go into our smelter. Um, <clears throat> wouldn't be too difficult to set up in my opinion uh, but we're not at that point yet These, the, it, I believe that you can have 8 running on one belt um, if I'm not mistaken so we should be good we might even be able to take it up to 10 I'll look at that in between episodes here and see if we can scale the system further but that's basically what we've done since last time kind of what the plans going forward are going to be um, if we look at our tech tree I could go go ahead and unlock these basic techs back here because we've got the science for it but our goal is going to be to get to human migration and colonist training because we really do need to get some some crew on board uh that way we can continue progressing to do chemistry science or biology science up here uh, for the more advanced materials you actually need to have human scientists human colonists that are trained as scientists inside your labs in order to generate these in addition to feeding the materials so we have that to look at next time we'll probably take a look at how to move the station around and we'll maybe go to our uh tease up 31 asteroid or planetoid over here just so we can grab this start mining out this gold in particular because yeah i i could use 30,000 gold so we can just basically have infinite power build capability um so that's kind of what the plan is if you enjoyed the episode today and learned a little bit about how to do solar power how to adjust the sortation system and you know expanding out your system slowly at a time and what to look for to make sure you're running peak efficiency uh, be sure to like comment subscribe as always and until next time it's been lone debater 7 and we will see y'all